Hi everyone, I'm Toby from Toby's Music Lessons and I'm here to give you a quick lesson on John Mayer's fingerstyle technique, his right hand technique that's used in hit songs such as Stop This Train and Who Says. It's a fantastic technique that you can use over many, many different chord progressions and in different songs it sounds fantastic. One of the, uh, the main things that makes this sound so good is it's got this slap sound coming in the whole time going with the bass, as well as a, a really nice uh, fingerstyle strum as well. So, uh, so it's all done at once, it sounds really, really good. Um, so one of, the, uh, one of the main things about this, uh, about this song, like I just said, is the percussive technique. And uh, this is the first thing we're going to look at. Before we look at the, uh, the six steps, this is kind of a, a pre-step, it's called the uh, thumb slap and we're going to look at how to get a good thumb slap going on. So, uh, so the first thing to do is give yourself a thumb up, like the thumbs, and, uh, and we're going to be hitting in onto the string, and the sound of the thumb slap is the sound of the string hitting this last fret on the fingerboard. And if you look at my hand here, the way I'm doing it is I'm twisting my forearm round and bringing it in. The thumb is actually staying pretty static and I'm not kind of going in straight at it, it's coming round and in. And uh, it's, it's quite similar to, say if you were to knock on your guitar, that's a similar kind of whipping action that we're going for. It's almost like you're spanking the string. So you're just going in and getting that kind of sound. One thing you want to avoid is kind of leaving the thumb there, going in on it. That's a no-no. You want to be whipping back out so you can get that light sound. Now, this, uh, this happens not only on the E string, but we can get that on the A string and we get that on the D string as well. You can see they've all got slightly different tones, but with a little bit of practice, easing up a little bit on that E string, and going in a little bit harder, just on the A string and D string, you can achieve a pretty even volume and tone throughout. It's actually very similar to a, uh, a slap bass technique of the thumb coming in and resting, the slap bass actually uses the, same, um, uses the same technique of the string hitting that last fret, but with slap bass actually going through the string to create that sound as well. We're not doing that here, we're just hitting on the string. So, but with slap bass you don't have to go all in, like flee out the red hot chili peppers and going in. A little bit more gentle than that, we're on acoustic guitar here. So um, one thing to point out is just how accurate you have to be with all the strings. Make sure you're looking down on that. You don't really want to be coming away too far, but equally you don't want to make the, the, the movement so small that we're not going to get that sound. Like I say, this, this slap sound is one of the key things to, to this uh, strumming technique. So, uh, so let's look at the first exercise, which is a thumb slap. And uh, it's just going to be on the open strings first of all, on the E, A and D string. And uh, what we're going to be doing is hitting the string and then a slap. So it's string, slap, string, slap. And uh, we've got two bars of E, two bars of A, two bars of D. Should be a tab written at the bottom of the uh, screen. And if you go onto my website, you'll find all the tabs, all the downloads for this lesson. So you can take those away, have a really good practice at them. So one of the things we're going to be using uh, throughout this lesson is a metronome to, uh, to keep ourselves in time. You should always be practicing to the metronome and making sure that you're hitting right on those beats. So I've got my metronome here and I've set it to 100 BPM uh, in 4-4. We're going to be playing to that. So, if we do this first exercise after four, we're going to be going in and one, two, one, two, three, four. Change to A. Change to D. Back 
that's A. Round again. Rounds and rounds. So you want to be practicing that around a million times. You want to make sure that that muscle memory is really embedded into that slap technique. Problem is, once we start involving the fingers, involving the other steps, that slap technique can get kind of forgotten about. You know, you're so involved with what the finger's doing that, uh, that you just end up sort of playing it and resting the, the thumb on the string. But what we really want to be doing is making sure that's always coming in on the two and four. It's like the snare of drums. Another thing to notice is when I'm doing the D string, my slap sound is actually coming in here on the A string. So when my thumb's coming back, see it's resting pretty much in between those strings and the sounds of me hitting is actually kind of that bit of my thumb there, just around the thumb knuckle. And get a bigger hit. Fine, once you start going down, if I was to do it on the G string here, slightly thinner sound, that's kind of going a little bit harder. And on the E string, it's going to make sure, again, not going in too hard. So once you practice that a million times so you can do it in your sleep, then, uh, then we're going to move on to step one. So step one, the thumb and the finger pinch. Now the great thing about this John Mayer technique is he only uses his thumb and his index finger for the whole thing. It sounds massive, doesn't it? But he's only using these two digits here. So a good idea, a top tip, is to fold away these other three fingers. Get these other three fingers out of the way because we're not going to be needing those at all. So the best thing to do is give yourself a bit of a finger guns with this hand and get these two ready. And uh, for our first step, now this is the first note in, uh, in this technique, is a thumb and finger pinch. So we're just going to be pinching the, the bass note, so the E string in this case, and the G string with the finger. Just like that, it's the first step. So notice how my thumbs kind of move quite far forward, my index fingers move quite far back. If they move together, kind of hit each other, we don't really want that, we want them to cross through each other, particularly more important when we go down to, uh, to the D string there, because otherwise it's going to sound a bit weak. So you see they're crossed over, got this kind of action going on. Okay, so this next exercise, um, what we're going to be doing is doing our pinch, our thumb and finger pinch, coming back into that slap on the two and four again. It's like the most important part really of this strum. It's got to make sure to be utilising that. So what we have here is we've got two bars of G here, low G and open G, and then just moving that down for a bit of harmony. So then we've got two bars of C there, and then going to two bars of F, one bar of F, one bar of C, one bar of G. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a bit of Paradise City almost, isn't it? So uh, again, with those hits on two and four, let's turn the metronome on, 100 BPM. And this one goes around twice. So after four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Change to C. Up to F. C, on to G. Let's go around again. G, up to C, F, back to C, on to G. There we are. So, Practice that a million times, and we want to be making sure getting that hit in. It's nice and nice and evenly coming through, and staying in time with that metronome as well. So once you've done that, we are ready for step two. 
All right, step two. Now this is, I reckon this is the hardest step actually. This is the trickiest one, and this is the one that really makes the, uh, really makes the strum sound incredibly full and, and really, really rich. But equally, it's the one that's going to require the most amount of practice. This is the slap flick. So when you're doing your slap on beat two, at the same time, you're going to be flicking down with the index finger, with the nail part of the index finger. And it's all coming in, in one motion. So you're hitting the, uh, most of the time we're just hitting the G, B and high E string with that finger at the same time. So one important thing, it is like a, it is a flick, but it's not really like a, a proper go in, flick the fly off the muffin type flick. It's quite a gentle thing. If you watch my hands, it's really only moving out about a centimetre when I'm doing that. Most of the, the motion is coming in from this twist of the forearm as I'm going in for that slap. So it takes a little while to get that to happen at the same time because you've really got two things going on as well as coming in on that slap, getting that sound, this index finger is going to be extending over the string. Now remember, this is just kind of a brush. It's not a, not a super hard strum or anything like that. It's brushing over the string. And you want to be practicing to make sure that, that that slap sound, that really cuts through, it really rings out over that down strum, that fingernail, fingernail flick down. Again, very, very gentle. So um, this is the, like I say, this is the bit that takes a little bit of time. So with this next exercise, what we're doing is holding a G chord and uh, we're going to be using the finger pinch from step one, then the slap slap flick and then uh, beats three and four just going to be resting on that it just gives your hand a chance to kind of get back really bring in this muscle memory so we're going to be going but in between two chords we've now got g and c add nine and uh, it's just going to be a pinch slap flick rest rest and then we're going to go again rest rest that's when we're going to change the c add nine Back to G, back to C, we go round that progression twice. So let's get the metronome on, 100 BPM. And we'll go after four, so get the G chord ready. And one, two, one, two, three, four. Hold, 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 change. Hold, 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 change. change. Let's go around again, back to G. Up to the C. Back to G. Back to C. Okay, so hopefully you could hear on that, that slap sound ringing through this nice small strum coming in over the top, or kind of underneath that slap sound because that slap sound's cutting through. So the next thing to do is to get rid of that hold hold and then we're going to put in another hip flick, another, another pinch, another slap flick, and bars three and four. Comes way more like a, like a strumming pattern now, way more consistent. So here's the next exercise again, two bars of G, two bars of C, but we're going to be playing within those rests now. So let's get that metronome on. And we'll go after four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Change. Back to G. again. Listening out for that slap sound. Okay, so like I say, this is probably the hardest bit in the John Mayer uh, technique is that hit and flick. So do take a bit of time doing it, use different chords doing it, 
making that motion happen happen all at once. Try it over different strings, different chords, and uh, and um, yeah, see if you can get it in one motion. See if it's really smooth. Get it into that muscle memory rounds maybe two million times this one before moving on to the next step, which is what we're going to be doing now. Okay, so the next step is a finger pluck. Now this happens after we do our pinch, after we do our slap flick. Now this index finger's down here, it's down the bottom, it's going to be coming up, but as it's coming up, it's going to hit a high E string. Now this happens on the and of two. So it happens directly after we do that hip flick, that finger's going to come up and hit the high E string on its own. So generally it's hitting the high E string, but perhaps we can also hit the, uh, the B string and uh, we can kind of change up this strum as well the more we, the more we practice it. So, uh, so if I go through the, the timing again, we've got one, two ands. One, two ands. And again, it's watching out for that index finger. Now this is where, this is where this slap can get a little bit forgotten about. So don't forget about getting that slap in. We really need that percussive sound to come through. Um, I always think of, um, think of uh, my timing in teas and coffees for those that have lessons with me. So I would be going, in my head, I go tea, coffee, tea, coffee. Because coffee's got two nice even syllables, tea, coffee. Then we can get that timing there. So here's our next exercise. We're only going to be going over G, and uh, and we've got the uh, we've got the rest sort of happening on beat three. But because that percussive sound needs to come through, we're going to be hitting just a percussive thumb there, just on beat four. So we're going to have tea, coffee, hold. And uh, four, and um, and let's give it a go. So just over G chord this time. Here's the metronome, and we're coming in after four, and one, two, one, two, three, four. go there we go okay so uh, let's move straight on actually to the next exercise and this is where we're going to be using G for four bars back to our C add nine for four bars still pushing in those percussive hits on the two and four so we're going to go after four and one two one two three four to C. Back to G. On to C. Okay, so one other thing just to point out is as well as being, remember how I said we were gentle with that down strum, so gentle with the, uh, with the up pick there as well. You don't really want to get the finger sort of caught underneath or having a big loud up strum there. So uh, now also, like I said before, we don't actually have to do that on the high E string every time. We can also be... Also be doing an up strum there on the B string, but notice my down flick now is a lot smaller. I'm not really doing a down flick on that high E string anymore. 
pretty much just getting the G string and the B string there coming up on the uh, coming up on the B string with my finger pick. So uh, let's do the next exercise now. Still G and C add nine, four bars of each. Only this time we're just going to be doing that uh, that finger pluck up on the B string. So let's turn on metronome. Go after four and one, two, one, two, three, four. to C. Go around again. Up to C. So practice that round quite a few times, a million times, a million and a half times, and uh, see so if you can get that percussive hit going on the two and four. It really helps with that rhythm, doesn't it? So once you've done that, we can now move on to step four. All right, so step four, this is the next note that comes in the, uh, the John Mayer fingerstyle technique, and this is a bass note. This is a bass note that happens on, uh, on beat three. And uh, a lot like, if you think back to that little pre-step that we did right at the beginning, our bass note, what well, the thumb's sort of plucking, I suppose, is coming in on the one, two, three, four. And we get that very constant one, two, three, four. So that's the next step that comes in. Um, so again, if I just hold my G chord, um, the next thing that comes in, see, so we're gonna do our pinch. Uh, slap and flick, come up on the finger, and then after that, that's when we play our bass on beat three. So, uh, so effectively, what we've got is T, half the T, percussive hit on beat four as well. T, half the T, hit. T, half the T, hit. T. So effectively, this thumb is now becoming like the rhythm section of this drumming pattern. You see, it's almost like the uh, the old drum, the boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. And it's really important to keep that incredibly consistent throughout the whole thing because that is the the rhythm that's driving this drum. So, on to the next exercise. Now the next exercise uses our G and our C add nine again, four bars of each, and we're adding in that extra bass note on beat three. Let's get the metronome up. And we'll come in after four. So, one, two, one, two, three, four. It's getting a little bit more involved now, isn't it, this right hand? So one thing that, uh, that you can do, and we'll be doing later on actually in, uh, in some, of the, um, some of the examples, is to give the, the second bar a rest, if you like, like reset that hand and get that muscle memory in. One thing that I always like to do when I'm learning a new, a new technique like this is uh, once I've learnt it from the, from the tab, then, uh, then I'll be looking at my right hand. I find it really helps kind of get it embedded up there. So um, what we could do, rest, 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 that's fine, rest, rest, could even add in some, some hits uh, on the two and four, maybe even 
some bass as well. Keep that rhythm going. And you get the idea. Try it with different chords, play it a million times. So the next exercise we're going to do is we're going to be uh, doing our, our bass note in beat three, um, but we're going to be using a D sus2 chord. Now this chord, this old John Mayer chord, this is the first chord he uses on Stop This Train and Who Says. So, uh, so it's, um, hopefully it's going to end up sounding like that very beginning bit, that very first bar of those two songs. So one thing to point out is, because this thumb is now coming down to the D string, it's compressing the hands a little bit. We've got to be just a little bit more careful of hitting the right strings. And again, just making sure that thumb is coming in in front of the finger when they're, uh, when they're doing a pinch or anything like that. So, uh, so with this one, again, I've just got my, my D sus2 chord here, and I've got my pinch. Got my slap flick coming up on that high E string, bass note on the D string, percussive hit on that four. Remember that percussive hit, my, my thumb is definitely going way more towards that A string than that D string. Now you're going to have to work a little bit harder with that right hand to get it to ring out. It's definitely not as easy to get it to cut through as that E string. So uh, this is a great one to do. So let's turn this metronome on. And let's do the next exercise. So one, two, one, two, three, four. first part of, uh, of those songs coming through with that one. So play that round many, many times, many, many times. And uh, try over different chords and um, try over different strings and things like that. See how that all feels. Loop it round and round. And don't forget about that percussive hit, making sure that cuts over the top. And once you've done that, we can then move on to step five. So nearly there. All right, so step five is another finger pluck. It's another pluck just with the finger on its own. This one generally happens on the G string. Remember the first one usually happens on the high E string, but we did a couple of uh, exercises where we did B string as well. This second one happens just on the G string. And uh, this comes in right after that bass note, comes on the next eighth note after that, after that bass hit, that second bass hit. It's almost like step one, when we were doing the pinch. Apart from now we're going to be playing thumb finger, coffee. So all together now we've got our pinch, we've got our slap flick, we've got our first little finger pluck coming on that high E string, we've then got our bass note, and now our new one, we've got another finger pluck in on that G string. Remember the rhythm, the rhythm is now going to be going tea, coffee, coffee, tea, coffee, coffee, thumb slap, tea, coffee, coffee, thumb slap. So if we hold G chord again, do it nice and slow first of all, we've got tea, coffee, coffee. And remember I'll get that thumb slap in on beat four as well. Um, now with this one, this is a good one when you're learning it to have that bars rest in between. So if you see the next exercise, there's a bars rest in between. So you can kind of reset the hands and have a think about what's going on. It's quite a few steps really. So we've got T, I'll just show you again before we do it um, with the metronome. We've got T, coffee, coffee, thumb slap. Remember that thumb slap coming in on beat four. So one more time, T, So let's give it another go. All right, so here comes metronome. 
And after four, so just with the, oh, G chord twice, and we move on to the C chords. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. You didn't change the C. Let's go again. Rest. Now we'll change to C. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, back to G. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, change. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. So with this one, this, um, th this when I was learning it, it got, it got quite hard to, to get that consistent. I really appreciated that bars rest. And I practiced it for, for, you know, a day, just doing that, getting it consistent, getting that bass and that rhythm section part to, uh, to ring out and always come through. And, uh, and then eventually, actually after not, not too much time, I was able to loop that round and round which we're going to do now. So that's going to be the next exercise. So still G and C, only this time we don't have that bars rest. And you can really hear the, the technique coming through now. So after the metronome, one, two, one, two, three, four. Change to C. Back to C. All right, so let's do it with the, the John Mayer chord. Let's do it with that D sus two. And uh, again, we're going to loop it around just D sus two this time. So bring my thumb to the to the D string. We'll go after four and one, two, one, two, three, four. playing that one. I know I keep saying it, I keep going on about it, but don't forget about that percussive slap. Now, I get very close together as well actually, the thumb and the index finger on that, on the step four and five, you know, the thumb and then the finger, get right together. So do make sure that the thumbs forward, fingers quite far back, if they're together, then uh, they'll just hit each other. It's not like the Eric Clapton uh, fingerstyle technique when he's doing a, he's doing like a single line. That's uh, that, that's kind of the way he does it. Instead of that classical thing of using index middle or anything like that, he's always it's always thumb and finger, kind of representing that down strum and up strum of a plectrum. It's kind of like that, but when you watch him, he's he's splitting them up, splitting them up like that, so they can go past each other. So practice that like three million times, practice it around quite a lot. And then uh, once you've got that, we can move on to the final step. All right, final step. Now this is one last slap flick. And that's what happens on beat four. Hopefully, you've probably already worked out that that's actually what's going on because we've always been putting in that hit on beat four. And uh, that's all we need to do now is combine it with that J 
gentle flick down. And that, that, that effectively is the, is the strum. That's the, the drum uh, technique. Uh, it's, that's the whole thing. So um, we look at it with our G chord. And we go through the steps. We've got step one, we've got a pinch. Step two, we've got a slap and flick. Step three, we're coming up with that finger on the high E string. And then we've got another bass note. That other up strum with the finger. And now here's our last step, the slap flick, coming down. So we've got T, coffee, coffee, T. Do that again. T, coffee, coffee, T. So again, this is one where we're going to have that bar's rest on you. This time, in that, that sort of dead bar, I've just put in a couple of bass notes couple of hits just to uh, just to keep that rhythm going. So we're using just G chords with this exercise. We've got again together or yeah I'll do the rhythm actually T, coffee, coffee, T and then just on the second bar let me do it again. Just getting that nice and even. Drop on the metronome. And after four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Miss that flick, didn't I? times. Last time. Nice. So let's see how you do that with loads and loads of different chords. Do it with all the chords you know. So let's do it with our John Mayer uh, D sus two chords. One, two, one, two, three, four. that flick again. There it is. So let's combine that G chord with that D chord. So we'll start with the D sus2 and then move on to G, back to D, back to G. So starting from D and one, two, one, two, three, four. Change. Change back. Yeah, that's a good one, that one. It's jumping the thumb, you know, making sure that it hits the, uh, the correct bass note. So, let's turn that off. So, whilst you're playing with that, do lots of other chords and, uh, and play with the metronomes to different speeds. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, obviously you can just slow down these exercises, which is very useful. And, uh, and really get used to that hit and flick. And once you've got that, it won't take too long to get that going around completely in a loop. So let's check out a few uh, continuous uh, strums, continuous goes round with that right hand technique. Okay, so let's do this pattern now, no gaps at all. And it's just, it's just full on John Mayer awesomeness really. This love this technique, it's so cool. So, so effective as well, because it's just using these two digits. Um, if you would like to learn more about this, if you'd like a few more exercises, uh, show, me, show me what you've got, if you've got any questions, 
then uh, then feel free to to go on the website and and book a one-to-one -one lesson. Um, I do lessons over Zoom, and uh, if you live local to St Albans, you can always pop around. We can actually have a jam. That would be fantastic. But I've got loads of other techniques like this, loads of other loads of other songs that utilise this, and. Um, if you want to learn Stop the Strain, if you want to learn Who Says, yeah, we can do that as well. But without further ado, let's have a look at doing this uh, right hand technique in a continuous loop. So uh, we'll start with the, uh, the D sus 2. Let's get the metronome on. And we'll go after four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's move on to G chord now. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's try a new chord, let's try E. So E chords, do you like E chord with this one? One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's try with A chord now. So I've got this exercise, got A, goes to A sus2, goes to A sus4, back to A. So it's got a slight movement going on, two bars of each, after four, and on the next cycle, one, two, one, two, three, four. To sus2, sus4, to A. Let's go around again. A. Sus 2. Sus 4. And A. There we go. Try with any chord. You can do it with any chord. You can do it with any chord progression that you know. Such a great right hand technique. It's really, really cool. Really, really good fun. So I really hope you've enjoyed uh, working through all of these exercises, and I hope that you you've got a lot out of them. Well done for for sticking with the uh, to this point in the in the video. Um, so after some practice, it just takes a bit of time to get this technique and to get it consistent. But pretty soon, if you keep working on those things, keep noticing that slap, noticing that consistent bass line, you will master this technique. And it's so, so cool, so, so useful to use. So um, if you'd like to learn more about this or learn any more about other fingerstyle patterns, maybe other artists, then please consider booking a one-to-one -one lesson with, uh, with myself, with Toby's Music Lessons. Uh, you can book it through my website, and uh, all lessons are conducted over Zoom, or if you live locally, you can, you can pop round to, uh, to here in St Albans, and uh, we can do a really cool face-to-face, -face, have a good jam. 
and uh, I'll be happy to show you loads more exercises with this, loads more songs that I use, other ways that I utilise this technique, as well as many, many other techniques that John Mayer and other great guitarists do as well. And uh, if you have any questions that you know you need, uh, you need some one-to-one -one answering, then, uh, then yeah, yeah, that's the best way to do it. So anyway, thank you for, uh, for staying with it and, and happy playing.